All right, children, brace yourself for the ever exciting tracing with lines tutorials. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a Google image search of Homer Simpson. And it comes up with many images of Homer Simpson. I'm going to choose this simple image. I'm going to bring that in Flash. I can do that several ways. First of all, I need to open up a new file in Flash. So I'll go back over to Adobe Flash and hit Command N, or I can go to File New. That's Control New or Control N on a Windows machine. I have my options here. This is the default 550 by 400. I will say OK. I'll come over to my web browser. I'll right click, and this is one way to bring it in Flash. And I'll say Copy Image. And I'll come back over to my stage in Flash and do Command V or Edit, Paste in Center. And there's my Homer Simpson. First thing I want to do is I want to resize this Homer. This is the black arrow in Flash. This is the selection tool. This is going to be your best friend in Flash. This tells Flash what you're dealing with, what you want to resize, what you want to modify. So I click Homer Simpson and then I go to the free transform tool. So I select the free transform tool and I can transform Homer Simpson. I can rotate him. I can flip them if I wanted to. I'm going to undo, I'm going to do Command Z. What I'm going to do now is hold down the Shift key and hover over the corner of this free transform selection and it will maintain the proportions of the picture which I, which I want. So I move that in place. I need to make sure that is good. Now I want to zoom into this because my stage here, which that's really what is going to be seen once you publish your movie, my stage here is too small. I want to use this big screen I have. So I can either take the magnification tool, the zoom tool, and I can zoom in, or I can come up here by this clapboard and go to show frame. Now, this is what I'm going to trace. I'm going to trace on top of it, just like if I was tracing in real life with two pieces of paper. So I'm going to create something else on top, another layer. This is my timeline. These icons right here is for new layer, delete layer. So I'm gonna hit new layer. That layer is above layer one, which is my homer. Now, since I don't wanna accidentally click and drag my homer, I'm going to lock this layer and I'm going to select the layer on top of it to do my tracing. Now, I want to trace with something other than black because Homer's lines are already black and I want to see what I'm working with as opposed to what I'm trying to trace. So this day glow green works for my stroke color, for my line color, okay? But I'm going to choose this color red. I like that more, okay? Now I can choose the line tool and make a line. I can take the pencil tool and create a line as well wherever my mouse moves. Incidentally, any option you choose in this flash toolbar is going to be listed underneath these ink wells. So if I take my pencil tool, for example, we have straighten, which I can, it'll automatically straighten for me, even though that doesn't really look very straight, smooth, or you can choose ink, which basically goes wherever your mouse goes. It's a little bit sloppier. I like to use smooth if I'm going to use a pencil tool. Let's get rid of those lines. I'm just going to select on that layer, which automatically selects the lines. Or I can just select a marquee over them and hit delete on the keyboard. They're gone. Now I'm going to start tracing the Homer head. Now if you want to have a sloppy tracing, you can go ahead and take the pencil and then just use your mouse and just come along like this and trace. It's going to look like complete garbaggio but you could do it that way if you want. I prefer not to because I like to make graphics that actually look good. So what I like to do when I'm tracing with lines and fills, which we're doing now, is I like to use the shape tool. This is my shape tool. I'm holding down the right click right now to get my options. It's on rectangle. Right now I can choose oval, make an oval. I can go back to rectangle, choose rectangle. Do not under any circumstances ever click any of these unless you know what you're doing. You can do Polystar tool, that's actually pretty good. But do not choose these two. And if you do, God help you, because I won't. Also, this option right here turns everything that you, if, it, if clicked, turns everything you draw into a group. If you don't know what that is right now, that's okay. 
It groups all your graphics and it is a complete pain. I don't even know why it's there, actually. So if you ever have that clicked or if everything you're drawing turns into a group, please uncheck that. I'm gonna get rid of these shapes right now and I'm gonna start tracing. I can trace most anything with circles. So all I'm gonna do is visualize the circles that I see in this Homer Simpson, okay? So I'm gonna use my circle tool. I, when I draw a circle, I don't want there to be a fill in it. Right now, there's a white fill in it. I do not want that fill. And I don't wanna be making circles and then go having to delete the fill afterwards. So before I make my circles, I'm gonna come over here to the fill color and go over here to this icon right here which says basically no fill and that's what I want I don't want any fill in my circles so I'm gonna come over here if you wanna know exactly where to start your circle there's a trick to it just imagine the circle being inside of a square for example imagine that Homer's eye in a square if I wanted to draw a circle exactly over the eye then I can just imagine the circle inside of a square box and then go to any one of these corners, click and drag, and I can pretty much get it dead on each time. Okay? So, in my mind, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to delete that square. In my mind, I'm going to picture a square. I'm going to go to the corner of that square, and I'm going to draw my line. Now, that's a little bit too thin. I want to make that a little bit bigger. So, I'm going to select my line or I can just click on it like so. While it's selected, I go down to my properties. If you don't have properties open, then go to window properties and open that up. Now, this line width is one pixel wide. I wanna say, let's say three pixels wide, and that makes it a little bit thicker. Now, let's make it two pixels wide. That's good. All right, now, I can make another circle for the other eye, or I can hold down the Alt key, which duplicates a graphic. Another way to duplicate your graphic is to select it, go to Edit, Copy, and then Edit, Paste, or select it, go to Command C, Command V, it's a lot quicker. That's your keystroke. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, which duplicates graphics. Now while it's selected, I'm gonna hit Free Transform. I'll just kind of cheat right here. Just bring it down one at a time. Now, what you have to understand about lines and flash, if they are on the same layer, they get stuck to one another. Okay? So this intersection right here, they are now stuck to each other. That's something you want to understand because if I want to delete part of that line, for example, this part of the line right here, if I wanted to delete it, I'll select it and it only selects that portion of the line and I can hit delete. Now I'm gonna go back and then go imagine some other circles. There's a circle right here. There's a circle right here. There's a big one right here. Right here. Right here. And we'll stop right there for now. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the eraser tool, which is right here, and I'm going to start deleting what I don't want. So I'll cut that right here, which allows me to click just this line and hit delete on the keyboard. This line, delete on the keyboard. I can draw a marquee over the line right here and hit delete on the keyboard. That isolates that line, I can delete it, delete. Now if I delete this portion of the line right here, it selects the whole thing. I don't want the whole thing deleted, so I'll cut it off right here, delete. Or Go back to my eraser and cut it and separate it. Delete what I don't want. I'll select here, delete. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that up to here. And I don't want that. So I hit delete on the keyboard. Now I can go to these points. Now if you hover over a point, it turns into a right angle. If you hover over a curve, it's just a curve. They act differently when you try to move them. So I'm going to move this over here. Move this right here. I'm going to make an adjustment. I will click and drag this one over here. Now, what I want to do is I want to connect this line to this line. I can eyeball it and do it, but that's going to, that might leave a gap. And if it doesn't leave a gap, it's going to leave some inconsistency right there, and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do 
before I drag that and snap it to this line is go over here to my selection settings and hit snap to objects, that magnet right there. And when I do that, the mouse snaps there. You're going to be turning on snapping as you need it. Sometimes it's cool, sometimes it's not cool. Right now it's very cool. So I have that selected on, so I'll drag this line right over here. I'll cut this off right here. Maybe curve it a little bit. See, now this is where snapping is bad because now I can't bring this exactly where I want because it wants to snap and stuff. So I'll be going back and turning that off this time. Drag that over here, cut that off right there. And now I'll just take a line tool, turn snapping back on so it'll snap and connect here. And then bend that line with my black selection arrow. And I'll just continue tracing this guy until I have all of the lines done. Remember, if I select this line, if it intersects, it's no longer part of the original circle. All right, now I've, I can select it and move it down to where I want it, but then I'll have to go and delete the lines that I don't want after that. I'll cut that off there, hit delete, select, delete, select, delete, cut that off there, delete. I'll turn snapping is on snap that there I don't like that so let's refine that by doing that and snap that right there perfect I'll bring this over here make a bit of an adjustment okay now I'm gonna continue tracing this Homer head until I have all of the lines right now I just have this Eventually, you'll have the same deal, and we'll continue with this tutorial going over fills once you have all of the lines created. All right, so what did we go over? The lines are controlled with the pencil tool or the line tool. Fills are controlled by the paintbrush, which we haven't got into that much, but we will later, so I won't cover it now. And lines and fills can be covered with the shape tools, the circle or the square. We went over the black selection tool, which you will use a lot. We went over the eraser tool and how to deal with layers in your timeline. That is the tutorial for tracing with lines. Thank you for tuning in.